Okay, in this video, we are going to look into building a LoRa radio data link using LoRa modules. You can see two LoRa modules I have mounted on uh, two breadboards. And I'm using the E32 LoRa modules made by eBite, and the part number is 915T30D. Now these are one watt modules. So I have them connected up and they're paired to each other. So if I send data through my FTDI, that's a USB to serial, on one of them, it will come out the other FTDI module. So it will transmit between the two. I have two antennas connected up. And the range of this uh, setup would be about five miles. So if I press a uh, key on the keyboard, you can see I'm sending data. You can see the LEDs come on. Now that it's a very short duration. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. So as I send ASCII character codes, the module uh, sees that and it enters the buffer and while the buffer has a character it's going to transmit that ASCII character code over to the other LoRa module. I have a receiver on so we're monitoring the actually data bursts of the LoRa module so you can see the duration of the, each data burst for each character. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer, and I'm running two windows in TerraTerm, one for each LoRa module. So the window on the left is a transmitting LoRa module, and the window on the right is a receiving LoRa module. So if I send data on the left window, we should see it on the right window. So I'll send some uh, data, and I have a receiver on so we could actually hear the data bursts. So I'll send some uh, ASCII codes uh, through the LoRa radio link. So you can see it's transparent. Whatever I transmit through my transmitting LoRa module comes out my receiving LoRa module. It's all automatic. So every time there's a character in the buffer, the LoRa module will transmit. Okay, I have removed my FTDI module. That's my USB to serial module from my breadboard. It used to look like this. It used to be positioned about right here. You can see it there on this on this uh, breadboard. So the module was positioned here and I was using it to send ASCII character codes from my computer, from the keyboard, uh, through the serial port into the LoRa module UART to be transmitted out the antenna. So I replaced the FTDI module with a Arduino Nano. Now the Arduino Nano is programmed to send the text string hello world every three seconds into the UART which will be transmitted out the antenna. So every time it sends the, the string hello world it's going to be entered into the buffer and while the buffer has uh, some characters in it, it will transmit hello world until the buffer is empty, then it will stop transmitting. So I could turn on the circuit and every three seconds uh, it will send out the string hello world and this LED will come on every time it's uh, sending the string. And I have a receiver uh, hooked up and we can actually hear the data being sent. So I'll power it up and this LED will come on every time it's sending the string hello world and you can hear the data burst, that's how, that's how long it takes, that's the duration of the burst to send the string hello world at 2400 bits per second over the air rate. Okay, here is the LoRa module that's going to receive my hello string from my master module and when it receives it, it's going to output the data from the UART and that's going to be fed into my FTDI module from serial to USB and then fit into my computer. I'll be running a serial terminal program called TerraTerm. So I'll power up. I'll power up the circuit, and we'll watch this uh, LoRa module receive the string "Hello World." So I'll power it up, and you'll be able to hear it. I have a receiver on, and every time it receives it, this LED will come on. Now I don't know if the camera will pick it up. It's pretty short duration. So now the Hello World data is being received and is being sent to my TerraTerm serial terminal program on my computer. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer. It's a serial terminal program and it's monitoring the LoRa module that's receiving the Hello World string. So it's monitoring the UART output of the LoRa module. So I'll power up the circuit and we'll send Hello String from the transmitter over to the receiver LoRa module and we should see it decoded on the serial terminal program TerraTerm. So I'll turn on the power and every three seconds 
should send hello world. So there it is. And you can hear the burst, the data burst. I have a receiver on. That's the data burst for hello world. Now I'm I'm running it in I'm running it in normal mode. There's a mode out it's called wake up mode, which sends a preamble, and I'll enable that. So there you hear the preamble and then the data. I'll put it back to normal mode. So that preamble will wake up uh, a lower module in the field that's in sleep mode, in low power mode, and then transmits the data. Okay, this is my main test setup for my LoRa radio link using the long range low power platform. So it's fairly simple. We just mount a couple of LoRa modules on a breadboard and we interface the modules using an FTDI module, a USB to serial module. So we could connect this connector here, this USB connector into our computer and run a serial terminal program. So we could send keyboard ASCII character codes into the LoRa module which will be transmitted over to the receiving module and the output of the FTDI module here will be fed into the computer USB port and we could read the, the ASCII character codes that's being sent uh, using another serial terminal program. Then we could use the Arduino Nano in place of the FTDI module and we could send continuous uh, strings or we could send uh, data like GPS data or, or temperature data over to the receiving module. So next we'll have to test the range of this, uh, of this test setup and we'll be using different antennas. We'll swap out different antennas and we'll compare them in our range testing. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my LoRa radio link. So the first thing you see there is the LoRa radio module, the 915T30D, and there's the antenna connector. Now there's a seven pin header. So pin six is your five volt power supply input and pin seven is your ground. Now the rest of the module runs on 3.3 volts uh, the rest of the I.O. pins and we get that from our FTDI. So here's our FTDI module which connected to our USB port and there's a 3.3 volts out which is powering uh, the rest of the I.O. pins. So we have two switches, our mode switches, mode 0 and mode 1 and that puts uh, the lower module into four different modes. There's a normal mode, the preamble mode, a sleep mode and, and the program mode. And then we have our RS-232 port, our RX and TX lines which feed into the FTDI which, which would output out the USB port. And then we have an auxiliary output which is driving this transistor, so I'm buffering uh, the, the auxiliary out with the transistor which drives this LED which indicates it's busy if it's receiving or transmitting. So that's basically the circuit there. So all you have to do is build two of these and power them up and get them to talk to each other. Okay, here are some antennas that we can use in our LoRa radio link. Now this one here is called a sleeved dipole antenna and I've tested it out on a return loss bridge and it tunes up pretty good on the 915 megahertz band. This one is also adjustable so that's one option uh, that we could use. Another antenna is made by MaxRad or PCTEL. It's a very compact antenna. It's uh, small and it's waterproof so it's another option that we could look at. And then there's my quarter wave monopole antenna which I built myself using a chassis mount end connector. And this one also tunes up pretty good on the 915 megahertz band. Now there's another antenna that I'm working on. It's called the blade antenna or an inverted F antenna. And I built it using half inch copper plumbing pipe. So this aluminum uh, bottom is my ground plane and I have an end connector as my feed point and that's feeding into my 50 ohm uh, input on, on the blade antenna. And it's tunable by pulling this end cap in and out so we can tune it. Now this is going to be embedded into the enclosure of our project so this will actually be the handle of the enclosure and it will be embedded into the enclosure itself. So it's, it's turning out pretty good so that will be another option we could test on a LoRa range test. 